Hey guys, today in this Unity tutorial I'm going to be going over light baking. So, light baking in Unity, what exactly is it? Light baking is a way for the system to take all the shadows and lighting data um, that objects or that lights may be projecting and bake it into texture maps that are then applied uh, to those 3D objects. So at runtime, those objects do not need uh, real-time cast shadows on them um, or, or lighting applied to them, uh, making your system a bit more efficient. Uh, so instead of having the system calculate uh, on the fly shadows and lighting, um, just all of it exists inside of those baked texture maps that are then applied. So uh, in order to get to light baking, you need to go to Window, Lighting, and Settings. Then I'll bring in the lighting menu tab. So you have three uh, three main tabs that you work under: scene, global maps, and object maps. We're mostly going to be working inside of this scene button tab. So by default, the skybox material exists uh, inside this top slot. If you have an additional skybox that you're using in the scene that you would rather uh, use you can put that uh, right up in here with the material. Um, if you have a sun source, you can also drag and add that in. And then um, the, the system, when it goes to bake all the data, can, can take that into account. So environment lighting, you can use color, gradient, skybox. So if it's an indoor scene, uh, you could give it a, a gradient color or just a, a regular color. Um, depending on how much intensity you want the scene to have from that uh, that lighting, you can adjust it. Whether you want uh, real-time or baked uh, ambience, you can do all that from in here. Uh, environment reflections. So if you want environment reflections from Skybox, uh, you can use that as a source, or if there is uh, some custom uh, reflections that you would prefer to use, uh, you can also import those the resolution of those environment reflections. You can up them if you need a, a higher um, resolution. And then the compression, uh, if you want it to be compressed, uncompressed, um, depending on what type of quality you need. Uh, intensity multiplier, that is how uh, these reflections work on, uh, on those objects within the scene and whether or not um, they need to be amped up a little bit or maybe everything is just a, a bit too reflective you can just uh, take it a bit down um, as well as uh, the number of bounces you want uh, from those environment reflections so by default inside the unity uh, auto generate uh, lighting is checked I prefer to uncheck it so that I can get all of my lights uh, situated in the scene before I go through uh, baking it uh, so your real-time lighting uh, and real-time global illumination, uh, if that's checked, then it'll calculate all that on the fly. Um, your mixed lighting uh, versus uh, baked global illumination, if you have that checked, then you can bake all that with, uh, with your mixed lighting. Most of the sh shadow mapping uh, and light baking options that we're going to be utilizing will be inside of this light mapper setting. So we are going to be using Enlighten, which is Unity's built-in light mapper system. So um, in order for a light map to actually be applied to an object is the mesh that when you bring it in has to have a second UV channel uh, with completely unique UVs to each surface. Now a lot of meshes um, for games share their UV space for efficiency, but for light mapping, uh, you can't do that or else you get overlap uh, in the in the shadows that are baked. Now, I unwrapped these in 3ds Max so they would have that second unique um, channel already. But if uh, you're not exactly sure how to do that, you can, uh, on import, go to your model setting. And there is a checkbox right here called Generate Light Map UVs. And you can just check that and hit Apply and it will automatically uh, unwrap the system for you. And there's a handful of sliders in here that you can mess around with if you want. So I don't need to do that since I gave mine uh, their own unique sets of UVs. So in order for a an object to be light mapped, 
it needs to be a static light map object. So all these little uh, uh, pillars and floor pieces inside of my scene um, have been made static. So, but they need you need to make sure that your objects are light map static in order for Unity to um, bake in their lighting. Also, um, you need to have ob uh, lighting on them that is going to also be baked. So I'm going to take my directional light and set it to baked. Now back over here in my light mapper settings, um, you can fiddle around with some of this if you want. Uh, if you want a higher resolution, um, you can change your uh, indirect resol uh, resolution texels. Uh, light map resolution, if you need more detail, you can up the resolution of text textiles per unit. And that's kind of like a, you know pixels across uh, how, how many units um, each one of these textures is um, across the entire scene. Uh, light map padding, if you need extra space in your baked light maps uh, to prevent bleeding from one texture into another, you can up that. Uh, light map size, um, I, I sometimes go 2048s, most of the time I stick with 1024s, but these are just the size of texture maps that are baked out. Um, ambient occlusion, you can choose to use this or not, I'm going to because it adds a little bit extra detail where the system uh, tries to add a little bit of ambient occlusion. Um, to give it, you know, just a, a little bit more oomph uh, to the scene. So I'm going to turn that off first so we can uh, compare and contrast uh, with it and without it. So indirect uh, intensity, you can up that if you want um, some overall uh, lightness uh, with the lights being able to interact a bit more with uh, objects they may be close to. Albeo boost, um, that can make uh, the albeo lighting uh, to the scene a, a bit higher. Light map parameters, uh, there are several default parameters that are built into Unity. You can make a custom one, um, but if you want a really high detail crisp bake, you're going to have to go for a higher resolution bake, um, but that's going to take a lot more time for the system to compute uh, the crispness of those shadows um, and all that. So I'm just going to leave it on the default of medium. All right. So all of my objects within the scene have been set to static, uh, light map static, so they're not going anywhere. My light is set to baked, so now I can just hit generate lighting. And I'm going to stop the video and come back when it is all finished. All right, so now that my lighting has finished baking, if we look here in the scene, I can move my directional light anywhere, and you can see that the shadows are not moving along with it. That's because all those shadows have been baked into a texture map. Over here in my lighting panel, if I go under global maps, I can see the shadows that are baked into these texture maps. Um, and, you know, just how Unity unwrapped them, or in my case, I used a a uh, second UV channel, um, but it utilizes um, a, a system that takes all of the different pieces and packs them into as few maps as possible um, just to be a bit more efficient. So you you don't have a, a single map for every single object in the scene to be able to reference. Um, these other maps over here are directionality, and those are baked if you are utilizing uh, this uh, directional mode. If you're not using directional mode, then it will only bake these single light maps. Directional mode is good if you're using normal maps uh, or specularity. Um, it can take into account um, that baked data information as well um, to offset uh, uh, some of the lighting and the shadows and things like that if it needs to um, when it's baked. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you have uh, non-directional, then it'll just bake these shadow maps. So I'm going to bake again, and this time with ambient occlusion checked, because I want to get a little bit of shadowing, uh, some extra shadowing to to go on in here, um, to create a little bit more uh, ambience and depth to my scene. So I'm going to hit generate, and then uh, I'm going to stop the video and then pick it back up. All right, so my bake is finished. As we can see, there is 
Um, there are now these nice shadows that exist inside of some of these crevices, as well as across my floor plane. Um, there is some nice, uh, nice ambient shadowing that's happening here uh, all over the place. So again, it's giving a lot more depth to my scene just by baking those shadows in. Um, instead of trying to have them all live at the same time. So again, this is a way where you can make your game a lot more efficient by not having to calculate lighting on every single object in your scene. Um, for objects that are in your scene that are small, though, it, like say on top of this little altar thing I have some coins, I would not want to bake in the shadows to all those coins. I would actually want to use light probe groups, which we're not going to get into in this tutorial. Um, so larger items, uh, through larger items, uh, architectural things, um, it's good to bake those in to uh, not have to, to utilize them um, and uh, calculating their shadows on play. Um, smaller, less significant items, um, you shouldn't bake those. Uh, light, pro light probe groups are a better option uh, for things like that. Um, Something to keep in mind, though, is the number of light maps that you have and their sizes. So at the current moment, I'm utilizing um, two directional light maps at 1024 and uh, 512. So though you're not having to calculate all this data on the fly with the uh, with um, a light, you are still having to load in more texture. So that takes up um, more processing power, a little bit more RAM. So it's a, it's a balancing act. So make sure that uh, if you are baking uh, things throughout your scene, that you're being very efficient with um, how many light maps you're using and whether or not your your objects that are that are in the scene are not utilizing too large of an area within those light maps. So if we look in these light maps right here, we can see all the little floor tiles. Uh, these objects right here are the pillars. So if these are actually taking up way too much area inside of the um, inside of the light map area, inside of our inspector under mesh, we can open up this lighting panel and under light map settings, scale and light map, we can actually make those objects smaller if they are less important and we don't need to have them uh, retain as much. Um, shadow detail. So for instance um, these little pillars here maybe they don't need as much um, detail or quality to them so I can cut their scale on the light map in half and then next time I go through and bake it, it they will utilize less space within my light map uh, therefore making it even more efficient. So I hope that this tutorial has been useful for you that uh, you understand a bit more about light mapping, its purposes, and how to uh, implement it into your workflow and into your scene. If uh, the video was helpful, please hit the like button and stay tuned for more. Thanks.